So we were talking about the bills and what would potentially happen to them because some people are saying, you know, will if the one version passes, will that be what happens? Is this thing going to go to the voters? You know, I've heard about that issue where they've got a constitutional referendum. Uh, the Senate has a different plan, and then people say, you know, what? Which of these two versions do you like better? Because uh, I get that question a lot. So the rule is that uh, I will answer any question that you all ask me, or I will talk about an answer that doesn't actually give an answer to try to not answer your question. So, so let's talk about let's talk about the House bill first. So the House bill does have a a, a joint resolution in it. And what that does is, is it, it sends the uh, action items to the voters in November. And what the language of the bill say is that retirees will get the raise, they'll get the additional check, they will get a pension system that is guaranteed to be fully funded by the year 2054. There's something called legacy payments where the state is going to make regular appropriations to the TRS fund and then additional payments every biennium. And it also does something called a gain sharing COLA. Uh, and the gain sharing COLA says that if the TRS is making money and they're making more than 7%, then a certain amount of that extra uh, revenue is going to go into a COLA for retirees. And that COLA can be as little as 1% every year with a maximum of 2% every year. And so when we talked to uh, the author of the bill, Dr. Bonin, he said, look, I'm just tired of retirees coming here every session saying that we haven't had a cold. And so I'd like to find a way to implement a COLA into the TRS benefits. And so that's all part of that bill. And it's all contingent upon the passage of another bill that would go to the voters in November. And so we, we know that these bills uh, offer a little bit of a, a roadmap for ideas and what is possible uh, because what happens in writing legislation is that you try to put everything that you want in that piece of legislation knowing that you can always come back and change or, or make different enhancements to it, but you can't really add anything to it after you've written it. So you can make changes to it along the way, but you might as well put it all in there and then see where it goes during the process. And so the, the real answer is that if these two chambers agree to what the House has proposed, there's all kinds of changes that could still occur. Because one of those items that's in that bill says that anybody who's 70 years of age or older will get an increase, will get that extra check. But somebody who's you know, 68 and been retired for you know five or six years and taught for you know 30 years uh, says, well, you know, how come how come I wasn't able to benefit from that? Uh, and and the cola is is two percent in that bill for somebody who's been only retired for a, a fewer number of years. And so again, we're in the process of discussion and saying, hey, look, you guys have set aside 1.68 billion dollars for the extra check. If everybody gets the check. How much would that be? And so, you know, all of that, all of that is in process. So that, that is the House's discussion. And when these folks are all working together, the House works together as a unit. Yes, there are Republicans in there and there are Democrats in there, but that chamber operates without really paying a whole lot of attention to what's going on in the Senate. Until a Senate bill comes over to the House, they're just focused on what they're doing. So in a lot of ways, the House is still working on their bill. And they know that the Senate has passed their bill over to them, but they're still working on their bill. And they'll get around to the Senate bill eventually. So that process is just unfolding. So this is a marathon, not a sprint. We are gonna go all the way to the end of the session. So if any of you are still interested in listening to those Thursday Facebook and YouTube videos, every week something's going to change. Some weeks it's less and some weeks it's more. Uh, but just be ready because there's a lot of change that's still going to happen. All right.
Are you bored of hearing about that particular bill? Because I'm going to talk about the other particular bill, which is Senate Bill 10. Senate Bill 10 is a little bit different. It says, hey, let's just take 4.5 or $4.6 billion, and we will go ahead and pay for the uh, raise, the COLA, and the enhancement right now, and it won't go to voters. So if it passes and the legislative session comes to an end, it goes into effect. Somebody say, well, when will it go into effect? Because I need my raise now. And so a couple pieces on that that we understand. Again, all this stuff is subject to change, but the raise would probably go into effect in October. Sometime between October, TRS would probably be better answering this, but it probably be October or November. I'm looking at Ronnie and saying, and Senate bill, Senate bill raise goes into effect September 1st, start of the fiscal year. So yeah, that's excellent. So the supplemental check, which is now set at 7,500 bucks for any retiree who's 75 years of age or over, they would get that check. Yeah, somebody liked that a lot. I heard that over there, yeah. So um, that would be paid uh, after the first of the year. Oh, I got one. Thank you, Ronnie, very much. I appreciate it. Um, and the reason that we pay supplemental checks after the start of the calendar year is what? So whatever check, whatever supplemental check is coming, and again, I'll say this little proviso about the Senate bill also. I don't know if it will be folks that are age 75 or older. I don't know if it's 70 and older. It may be 62 and older. Again, all of this stuff gets thrown into what we call a conference committee and that's when the House and the Senate get together and work it out. And last night, when we were at the hotel, I said, you know, I got a couple objectives for today. And one of those objectives is to leave a good impression with everybody in that building so that when they're trying to decide what are they gonna ultimately do for you, they have a fight over which chamber decides they get to do more. <laughs> so you all, did a great job today. I was so, so proud of everything that y'all did. I had a great, a great House session, a great Senate session, and that'll carry us through the end of this legislative session where they'll finally make all the decisions. So to wrap it up, pension fund, actuarially sound. Healthcare, fully funded. COLA, gonna happen. Supplemental check, gonna happen. How it's all gonna come together? Wait and see. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about that? Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Any questions? Anybody get any more ice cream? All right, so I've got one final request, and I'm gonna send him a text and see if he's actually showing up. But if you all don't have to leave just yet, and you're okay just kinda hanging out and having water and ice cream, I would like to have the biggest crowd as possible I can for Chairman Capri Let me see if he's coming. And if he is, great. If not, we'll eat his ice cream and maybe all the sorry for it. So, all right, thank you all so much. Be safe. Appreciate it all. Thank you.